Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi. Wa alaikum salam wa When we have continuous chatter and backbiting around us all day in the workplace, how can we shut ourselves off from that situation? You have to get the timeless reality. Meditate, contemplate, put your ta'weez, that is called Jihad al-Akbar. So these types of questions on how to struggle and it's a struggle. So this is how we make our wudu, make our meditation. Why Prophet is telling warriors who fought two battles a day that, when I leave this earth now coming for you Jihad al-Akbar. Hmm? You tell the most fiercest warriors Allah created, the holy companions, that uh, you're going to be facing Jihad al-Akbar soon. They were astonished that this wasn't Jihad al-Akbar our lives with you? Said, no this was, this was a nice jihad, this other ones are coming when I'm not here is going to be the immense fight. So that means what? You're going to have work at… Uh, fight at work, fight at home, fight at family, fight on the street, fight everywhere. Not fight with people but we're going to fight ourselves. So this is very hard, why? Because there's no reward for these fights. You don't get money from it, you don't get the bounty of you know taking somebody's uh, property. This fight has uh, no reward that can be seen other than good character. So they fight you at work, you stay quiet, be calm. You know, not to be oppressed by people but to control and to, to, to be moderate in our understandings, controlling ourselves with everything around. So it's a continuous fight, nothing of which is easy. And that's why Prophet described, this is Akbar, this is going to be the, the, the fight of your life. And if you're the people of the last days, my goodness these are my ashiqeen and muhibeen. They love me and I love them and that's why they just explained this tonight. If you want that title uh, then it's not only about your worshipness and being proud of you worshipping better than other people and commenting against other people and their worshipness. This is about the hue and the beautific color of your soul that can only be achieved by your level of service and durood and ishq and muhabbat of Sayyidina Muhammad. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So then this is what gives us that reward in these days. Read Qur'an and read ayah about loot. You think in those few ayat al kareem they came, they got angry, they terrorized Sayyidina Lut. Now turn on the news and what do you see? They're coming into everyone's school. Luti, same, same exact situation but now worldwide. And you read ayat al Qur'an, two ayahs and you say, oh okay and pass it. Now you actually get to live it, you live it. You see that what they say and what they're planning on doing to children, they're supposed to be teaching math and sciences not what to do with their body parts, they have nothing to do with that, that's not what they were hired to do. But why the Lutis are doing this? And we're seeing the last days, we're seeing what's happening. 
So now ayah to Qur'an, every ayah you read it's coming to life. So this is Akbar, these are the times of Akbar, these are the times of immense difficulty opening. So it's not going to be something easy, it's not going to be something small. But the reward from Allah is great and we can get through the difficulty with the love and the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and that becomes our shield, that becomes our protection, that becomes our guidance, that becomes everything for us. The level of ishq and of love of Prophet imagine that's the shield of, the, of these ashiqeen. They have so much love for Prophet that when people come to do bad to them they're being guided because these angels don't want anything to happen to these ashiqeen because they emanate the love of Prophet At every step they're warning, watch out they're gonna do this, they're gonna do that, they're gonna do this, they're gonna do that. And people are astonished, how are they so warned and so prepared for everything? And this is a sign, this is, a, this is the way of realities. When you have this love Allah is with you, protection is with you. Those whom don't have that love they're trying to figure it out and figure their way out on this earth. But inshaAllah Allah keep us in that love, shield us with that love and protect us by means of that love. That's why the khidmat and service is so important in these days so that we're under the nazar of Sayyidina Muhammad InshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Ya Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Rahmatullah Sayyidi, I feel no motivation for dunyawi struggles apart from basic requirements. When I start relinquishing free will, if everything is written, why focus on dunya? Is this a statement or a question? <laughs> if it's a statement then alhamdulillah don't focus on it. But if you're a philosopher and you say everything is written so I don't have to do anything, those things don't work with Allah. So. You live life as if you're living forever. So all day long you have to struggle saying that I have to feed my family, pay my rent. But night time you worship as if Armageddon is coming in the morning, meaning what? You do your ibadah, you do your worship, you make your madad, you make your connection because I know tonight it's finished. I'm going to hear the takbir of Sayyidina Mahdi by morning the world has evaporated. Then you wake up, see the morning is here, I have to work again and you work. So it means that the perfection of character is that Allah wants us to do the best, to take care of our family and to struggle. It's not a philosophy, don't use philosophy on these realities. I have to struggle because Allah wants me. I go to work, I do everything, I'm not emotionally attached to it, I'm not trying to conquer a career at this office. I get my paycheck and go home. We described that the night before and it was very clear, you don't have to go to the cafeteria wishing everybody happy birthday, this is my work family. No, no, no this haram, there's no work family, you only have one family and you do your work and go home. So they work hard and they take their paycheck, they don't need to socialize and at night they worship and do their zikrs and their salawats on the fear that difficulty is coming, sickness is coming. So these are what balanced servants do. InshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa How can one stay mindful in prayer if the congregation prayer is prayed too fast? Your prayer and mindfulness is when you're at home, not in congregation. That's the Wahhabi thing. The Wahhabi ideology is that they come for congregation and become a time to show off and they do all their ibadah in outside for people's eyes. 
Tariqa comes and teaches your true ibadah has to be hidden. So our congregational prayer should be at a speed that's okay for children and elderly, not too long and not too harsh and not, not too you know showing off. Read your short surahs, finish your salah, it's enough. But if you're trying to impress the association, you begin to recite very long. People can't take it, people are not well. And that's not the way that Prophet described for ourselves that be conscious of the older and the young. They're not able to carry that and turuqs come and teach also all the bad characteristics are coming in at that time. The person is showing off, the people are being distracted and if you truly want to pray long then don't do it with people observing you and most people who pray long they go home and pray short, very short or even if they pray at all because everything is for the eyes of people. But when you pray at a moderate speed in the mosque and you pray long at home when nobody is looking at you, you pray. You go into sujood, you cry, you go into sujood, you meditate. Those are the worshipness that are dear to Allah not external. So that's why we have to deprogram ourselves from what these people have taught. They do everything long in front of people and that's not because the nafs may enter into the worshipness and void all of the, the worshipness and the jama'ah behind is becoming frustrated, they're losing their salah. So then the imam is responsible for that too, you're going so long the person can no longer concentrate, he's now moving, fidgeting, you're responsible because you made it so long that you lost the sheep behind you. So when a shepherd guards his flock he walks from behind, right? Why? To watch where the sheep are going. So the wolves are not coming to eat his sheep. But when you go long you became heedless for what's happening behind you and you're like enjoying yourself and thinking, oh I wonder if the people are so impressed, look how, how long I can pray. How many ayat al karim I have memorized? So we avoid all of those situations and uh, it's best to do those privately so that uh, Allah can be impressed with the servant privately. Oh mashaAllah look you do all these things. We said even wudu, the most dangerous is wudu, that make your wudu very good when you're at home and in front of people make wudu like a madman. Don't talk, wash fast, get out because again everything in their false aqeedah is to do everything the opposite. They go into the facilities in a masjid and they excessively use water all over themselves so you think this person is tahira, is purified. But at home they don't even care to wash the stains from their body and they barely make their wudu. So that's the opposite, means in front of people wash fast, don't talk, get onto your salah. At home then make sure that a clean wudu, everything is washed and that you come out pure and purified with the least amount of water and the most amount of purity and you make your salah. So it means everything the tariqah teaches is for moral excellence, not for the eyes and, and the, the, the wantings and the, the happiness of people but to take away from what people are looking at and that we do what we do for the sake of Allah inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. In this month of quaking is it possible that we only feel negative energies coming out and not bad characteristics? Forgive me for my bad adab. Are the negative energies bad characteristics? What did you think bad characteristics came out as? So if you're feeling negative energy everywhere and you, you're getting angry, you're, you, all of these things are coming out, they're coming out because the anger comes out, the, the bad uh, words come out, the bad character comes out, all of these things come out 
so that Allah can show hasad, people go someplace and all of a sudden these sort of crazy hasad statements come out and people's jealousies come out. And maybe they didn't even know they had this type of jealousy but then Allah shows to the servant that, no, no these are within you and your hajj won't be accepted until these are taken away. And it's not a… it's not a, a coincidence that Allah put zilzila before hajj. Because what hajj is the kawthar on the twelfth hijab times the power of nine comes Surah Kawthar. How are Allah going to give the servant to drink from the Kawthar oceans when the mirror, the quaking of the reflection shows all these bad characteristics? They have to do many qurbans and they have to acknowledge their bad character and say, Ya Rabbi what I couldn't purify take in the ransom of my qurban, take away these bad characteristics. And that's why they, when they would do the qurban they would put the mark of it that, Ya Rabbi that's not the blood that reaches but with the sacrifice of this creature take away my bad energy and my bad characteristics and my deficiency. And that's why it's so important to feed people, to give water, all of the things that we have put into our system of putting faith in action, they're not just the practices but they're a means and tools for our community. That if you're sitting and meditating asking to reach towards Divinely Presence and you know that you're deficient in, in your characteristics, feed people. They, they wipe out the sins within our category. Everyone has to know themselves, they know what they said, what they did wrong, what they do wrong. So by having a means in which to do good they wipe out the bad. You know the, you, you want to reach to the fountains of Kawthar at least open the fountain of water for yatim and poor people so that they can drink from that water. So, Ya Rabbi as I gave to these people to drink for water and spoons of them, let me to drink from your waters of paradise and the Kawthar oceans. So it means everything has an immense hikmah and the charity and the good deeds of mankind wipe away their sins and shortcomings. That's why we said the immensity of the qurban if when you go back into our teachings of the hajj and the reality of hajj and the reality of maqam al-ihsan, Islam, iman wal maqam al-ihsan and that maqam al-ihsan has to, def to defend you, right? That the Islam perfect, Sayyidina Maryam is representing the station of faith, Sayyidina Isa Salam represents Maqam al-Ihsan, awlad salihin It was not for her to defend herself amongst people, why does her iman have to defend? Why does her somebody of faith have to defend themselves to dirty dunya people? They thought they're akhirah people but they, as soon as they opened their mouth they became dirty dunya people. Let Maqam al-Ihsan speak for itself. Right? Because your faith in action will speak for itself. When they come to question you, you, what you did wrong, you don't have to speak. Your actions will step forward and say, no, no, I'm the water that this servant gave, I'm the food that this servant fed people. See, Naisa defended the mother and spoke as a child and even then the dirtiness of people became even dirtier and they didn't even accept his speaking as a miracle. And that's why Allah said, why should have Islam defended it if, if even her iman is not going to be defending the people, Muqam al ihsan they won't even accept. But these are the immense realities of this path. So the people whom are trying to perfect their Islam for hajj, it perfect their Muqam al-Iman and faith on this hajj. And asking Allah open for me a reality, awlad al-Saliheen, my birth of my reality to come as maqam al-Ihsan, let my perfection defend me. And any shortcomings that I'm having every year Ya Rabbi with the promise of this qurban for the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad take away these imperfections and that creature makes its miraj based on that. Can you imagine that a, a normal creature that just eats and moves and does nothing, 
by means of, of the most honoured in creation wa laqad karamna bani adam comes to this creature and says that by your sacrifice take my burdens off of me. And the miraj of that creature is granted a miraj because of that servant. So Allah has an entire system in play where no mind people come, why you have to do qurban? Well that creature wouldn't have reached a miraj without that. What an honoured station that lamb reached that he took the sins of Bani Adam and carried them for the sake of Allah in His Divine the Presence. Then the light of that creature has its own miraj and ascension and Allah does with that light what Allah wants to do with that light. But that was the greatest existence, everything came into existence to serve. When an apple came into existence from a tree, it came to the service of Allah that one of Allah's creatures would eat from its fruit and nourish itself. And after it ate from its fruit, its seeds would go back into the earth to replicate the entire system of coming again and producing food and sustenance for Allah's creatures. So everything in Allah's way has an immense, immense hikmah and immense uh, blessings and realities inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah uh, When Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq mentioned he left only Allah and Prophet for his family, when testings make us feel our only truth of love is Prophet is this what he meant? Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq gave everything in the way of Allah that Prophet had called the companions that they need to go to battle and they need to arm their nation. And each of the companions went back to get their supplies to give to Prophet to sell and to arm the nation. From that Sayyidina Omar came with half the sustenance of his home and then Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq came and brought the entirety of his possessions. All his assets he put in the presence of Prophet and Prophet was astonished and said, Sayyidina Abu Bakr what you left for your family? He said, La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah. <coughs> this was the immense love for Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq for the love of Prophet This is the inheritance of Naqshbandiyatul Aliyah. That it's not a coincidence that Allah gave Naqshbandiyah to be formed by Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq because that was the inheritance. This is a man and a soul whom gave everything for the love of Prophet and the child who gave everything for the love of Prophet Imam Ali means these are noble honoured souls and as a result that he gave everything for Prophet on Allah granted from the day of predestinies that you would be the father of Naqshbandiyatul Aliyah wa Siddiqiyah because this khuluq, this character of yours I want you to dress this creation and those whom I destined to be in this turuq in this way that you dress them from your reality, your love. Can you see all the holy companions what makes them to be special for Allah was the love they had for Prophet Jismahu, your, your jins is what I'm interested in. How you loved Prophet Go teach this creation to love that way, make them siddiqiyah, make them to have this ishq, make their siddiq and truthfulness. Not that they don't tell lies but that they're truthful to their love of Sayyidina Muhammad So the whole university of Naqshbandiyatul Aliyah is that inheritance. Its deen and principle governance is under Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq. No matter what they call these names it's from siddiqiyah. 
When we say Abu Bakr as Siddiq is the overlord of it, means he's the one whom perfects it and teaches it and intervenes on it so that their khuluq and their characters are of a beatific nature that Allah to be pleased with, Sayyidina Muhammad to be pleased with. And this is the Im- immense immensity of the tariqah that they have the, the full moon of this character, this love and this immense realities. We pray that Allah dress us and bless us from the immensities of these lights and that grant us, grant us on, to be under the nazar of these beatific souls and the love that they have for Sayyidina Muhammad And because of our love for Prophet the immensity of which, of which they want to help us. They want to reach to us and they want to dress us and bless us to lift us to that state inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamu ala mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. As alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs. Please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also. Be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.